Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you roles in Meteor. We're going to be able to set roles and use them as a way to control permissions on our site. So only giving access to admins or normal users or whatever for certain aspects of our site. So let's get started with that right now. So while we have made a lot of progress by having custom login systems here, we've been able to add new fields, we've been able to add new verification and validation to these fields. What we don't have yet is any kind of role-based system. Now roles in Meteor is actually super nice. There's a really great package that just makes working with roles totally painless. So this roles package is Alanning Meteor Roles. Now if I pronounced Alanning wrong, uh, please let me know how it's pronounced. We have Alanning Meteor Roles. I'll make this link available in the description of this video. We want to go ahead and add this package just simply by adding the Alanning Roles to our package. And then we're going to get into exactly what this package can do for us. So let's go ahead and copy Alanning colon roles and throw it into our dot meteor packages file. Let's just scroll down and let's paste it in here. We can verify with our command line that it is in fact going to go ahead and install. So if you would like proper spelling, here it is, A-L-A-N-N-I-N-G colon roles, R-O-L-E-S. Cool, so we now have Alanning roles here. And we're ready to get started assigning roles and using them. Now the best place to fully see the documentation here besides the readme is the documentation page. If we scroll down here in the readme or you could just do a command find for documentation, you could find a link to documentation and it's on allening.github.io, meteor-roles, classes, roles.html. And what's great here is we see all of the methods and properties that's allowed for us here. So for instance, if we want to add users to roles, you could use add users to roles. And simply, you're just passing in either a single user ID or an array of user IDs, and then either a single role or an array of roles. In addition, we can also have groups of roles, which are entirely optional. Now, in addition, we can also do things like create and delete roles because these roles are going to be saved into our database. However, role gets created simply just by adding someone to it. So let's actually go ahead and see this in action. If you remember, in the last video, let's go back to our code and let's head to server accounts and then we have our post signup hook. Now the post signup hook only runs on the server here and it essentially has this post signup function that we made where it was really just console logging the user's ID and some of their information. Now let's say when any normal user signs up for the website here, they're just a normal user, we want to give them a role of normal user. Or it could just be normal if you would like. And also, if you remember, we had this drop down on register where it was profession, where they could be a developer, designer, or other. Now, it would be really interesting if we could take the value of this and set it to be a role as well. And let's quickly just create an account. You can always blow these accounts out, or it doesn't even have to be real uh, because this is a test site. I obviously don't know it's got at gmail.com. So let's go ahead and just click register now with some of this fake information. Let's update that. Let's click register. And let's head to our server where we can see the information. We have the ID. And then you'll notice inside of the info, we have an object. And what we want is this profession. So to get to profession, we need to go to info.profile.profession. And we can grab that value. So let's head to accounts.js. You remember we wanted info.profile.profession, like that. Make sure all the spelling is correct. You can always copy and paste these things in here, like that. Okay, so we now have lots of information that we would need, right? We have their profession and we have their user ID. If you remember when we were looking at the documentation to add a user to a role, all we really needed was the ID and whatever roles we wanted to give them, whether that's in an array or not. 
let's actually go ahead and copy this entire roles.addUser to role. We can paste this in here and we can say roles.addUsers to roles. Now we're getting the user ID, which is nice that this is the same as this right here. We don't have to change anything. And now the roles that we want are going to be one normal user and then comma two info dot profile dot profession. Now we don't want to add them to a group. So let's get rid of the second comma example dot com. And now we can have a semicolon here. So what's going to happen is they're going to sign up. It's going to hit this post sign up hook and and we can leave these council logs in here for now, but it's going to hit this post sign up. We already saw that this post sign up works, but now it's going to run roles dot add users to roles and it's going to accept the user ID and assign them to normal user as well as whatever profession we select. Let's give this a try. I'm going to come back to my site. I'm going to log out. I'm going to log in again with some phony information. So let's go ahead and give this just SEO at gmail.com. Again, it doesn't really matter here because we're just testing this functionality out. I can always blow this information out of here. Let's go ahead and click register. Now we won't see anything interesting right away, especially on the front end of our website, but you will see that we did console log this and developer correctly. Let's go ahead and hit control M to open up our meteor toys. And hopefully we see something really interesting. Now in the brilliance of this, it was really easy. The person who logged into our account now is a developer as well as a normal user. Now, if we wanted to limit functionality based on these roles, I mean, we can access this role information uh, simply within the user's object. However, there's actually a nice method provided to us by the roles package that allows us to check a user's role. I'm going to go ahead and back a page here and you can see we have something user is in role. It's the very last one on the right here and we can click this and we can see user is in role and accepts the user, that being the actual user object or the user ID. So if you have the entire object, you might as well just throw that in there. Otherwise just pass in the ID and then the roles, which can be an array. Now this is cool because it basically just returns a true or false. So let's go ahead and use user is in role. So let's go ahead and copy this first example, or you can type this out. I'm going to head to the front end of our website because you can see how versatile this is. And let's go ahead and head to pages dashboard. Now the dashboard page is really just an H1 here. Now this is going to be really interesting because what we want to do is check if a user is in a role and if they're not in a role give them a message that says, hey, you're not authorized to view this, especially if this is like an admin page only. Now in another situation, you could definitely redirect them to another route. But for this example, it's nice just to check because we can show them two different things based on what role they are. So first let's make a new JavaScript file, which is going to be dashboard.js. And now we can just simply have a helper. Now check this out. We can say template.dash board. I believe I have that in caps in the template name yet yeah, template dot dashboard dot helpers. And then we can have function with an object inside of here. Let's just go ahead and create a helper, which is just going to be admin. Now we can have admin. So it's an object, obviously. So we have a colon here and let's go ahead and have a function that's going to return the outcome of the current user's status here. Remember we had this roles dot user is in role. So uh, in camel case, we're checking the current user and we're going to see if they're an admin. I'm going to have a semicolon here. Now remember this method here just returns a Boolean. So admin is either going to be equal to true or false. Now this dot user, obviously we want it to be meteor dot user ID like this. And now we can grab the current user's ID, check if they're in, check if they have the role of admin. And if they don't, then admin is going to return false. Now in our template here, we can do a little if magic. 
we can just say if admin and then if they are an admin we would like to show them this entire dashboard page of which there isn't anything other than just a dashboard header um, actually let's do an else here we can say else we can give them an h1 and say not authorized okay let's end this if and save now let's head to our page let's come here and let's go to dashboard now you'll see interestingly enough we are not authorized now this isn't a great strategy right here because what we still have is we still have access to this stuff now one thing we could do is also have this navigation only show up if you are have that role and you might think, oh, that's great. I have to write another helper for this template. Well, that's actually not true because what's so great about this roles package is that it actually offers a helper for us. So everything we just did there was unnecessary. If we come to UI helpers here, you'll see we have this is enroll helper. And it's so simple. All we have to do is say if is enroll admin. We don't have to pass in a user, right? We can just come to this where it says if admin, and we can say if is in role, and now pass it the string admin, and we're gonna get the same thing. So you'll notice it's not gonna be using this helper anymore. It's going to say if is in role admin, then go ahead and display the dashboard, otherwise not authorized. Now let's come back here and you can see even upon refreshing, uh, I mean, it should have been fine without refreshing, but just to confirm we have not authorized. So we can go ahead and even use this if is enroll admin on the app layout. So if we head to layouts, app layout, we have the app nav here and we only want the app nav to even exist if user is an admin. So only show this to them if they're an admin and we can come back and sure enough, our sidebar app navigation is gone. But let's go ahead and confirm this is working for somebody who is an admin. So I can hit Command M to open up Mongol here. Let's head to users and I'm going to actually just come down here where it says roles. I'm gonna click update because I wanna update this and I can have comma and what we want here is in a string admin string let's click save and literally instantly our dashboard is now back and we're no longer getting this authorized message and we're getting this if i were to remove that role simply by clicking update let's delete this whole thing here the moment i click save not authorized so as you can see, we've now assigned a role based on a dropdown in our registration, as well as a role just based on uh, what any normal user would get when they sign up. And we're using that role to limit functionality of the site. What's great is that you can use these functions anywhere you want. So in dashboard.js, we use this roles.user is in role to limit the user from seeing things. However, you could use this same method anytime you wanna check for roles. So let's say you're setting up permissions on inserting into a database. In your media methods, you could have roles.user is in roles, user is in role and check to see if they're an admin or have posting rights before they're able to submit any type of content and limit their type of content in that way. So like I said, we set this up in no time. This roles package for Meteor is really, really, really smooth. It works great. And if you ever want to add users to roles for basically any action, let's say you have a web store and somebody buys something, you wanna label them now as a customer. All you have to do is simply use this add users to roles, add this, add the role, and it's not going to remove any of the roles. It's simply just going to add on to it. In addition, you can always head to this documentation and check out the role methods to see that there is tons of great stuff. Add users to roles, create role, delete role, get groups for users, get roles for user, get users in role. So you can see that you're even going to get the users themselves who have a specific role. And all you have to do is pass in the string of the role. 
You can even bulk remove users from roles where you can pass in an array of users and pass in a role and, and have it remove those roles. So as you can see, there's lots we can do here. In fact, we're going to continue to use this as we build out some functionality in our application that's actually going to be sort of a user database where we can see all of the users on our site and we can easily and quickly change their roles and their allowed functionality based on permissions. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.